Thank you. Welcome to this meeting of the Planning and Regulatory Committee. The agenda papers and other relevant information for this meeting are available for the public viewing on the Herefordshire Council website. Please remember that your, word, your words and actions should be chosen carefully, and members are reminded that speeches are limited to three minutes. The Council is streaming this meeting live on Herefordshire Council YouTube channel and also making a recording. The recordings will be available via the Council's website shortly after the meeting has concluded. <coughs> Other attendees are permitted to film, photograph and record the meeting, prov provided that it does not interrupt the business <coughs> of the meeting. If you do not wish to be filmed or photographed, please identify yourself so that anyone who intends to record the meeting can be made aware. To ensure that the recording quality is maintained, could members speak as clearly as possible and keep background noise to a minimum and ensure that mobile phones and other devices are turned to silent? Welcome to all those in attendance. Uh, can I um, ask that uh, also welcome our new member who's sitting in the gallery uh, for the council of uh, Councillor Davis, who uh, is joining us to see how how we do or do not conduct the, the business of the meeting. Can I welcome her? And now I'll ask Mr. Banks to introduce all the officers. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, morning, members. My name is Andrew Banks. I'm the Development Manager uh, for Heritage Council Planning Department. Uh, to my left, we've got David Gossett. Uh, who is a case officer for both of the applications that you'll be considering today. Uh, David's our senior planning officer. Also in attendance, we have Dawn Evans. Um, she's with us remotely uh, on the screen um, from Legal Services. Um, and I'm afraid we don't have any representation from our highway department today. So that's us. Thank you, Chair. Right. Can I now move on to apologies for absence? We have an apology from Councillor... Graham Jones and Councillor Andrew Jones. So, and I'm just substituting for yeah, that comes next. Thank you. So, name substitutes. We have Councillor Harrington for Miss uh, Councillor Foxton. Are there any other substitutes? I think not. Then we'll move on to. Are there any declarations of interest? Councillor Hardwick. Uh, I've got a non pecuniary of uh, interest uh, with regards to item seven. I know the applicant and uh, several of the object objectives. I'm sorry, but we can't hear at the back. Sorry to interrupt, but we can't hear anything. We've got microphones for the two years. So he has a microphone on the top of the Hello. Hello. Right. Chair. Chair. Could the gallery sit at these? At the rear desks. Yes. yes. If, if you'd like to move to the rear desks, there you may get a clear. Uh, th there's a problem with the, the the sound going past that particular beam or whatever it is that goes across this. Yeah. The back road. <laughs> right, we'll move on to confirmation of the minutes of the meeting held on the 9th of February. Thank you very much. No uh, 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 matters of accuracy have been notified to the monitoring officer. officer. Are the minutes of the meeting held on the 9th of February approved? Can members please raise their hands? <coughs> any against? No, any abstentions? I was not present, Chair. Thank you. Okay. Just one brief uh, 
announcement for on the chairman's announcements. I'd just like to thank uh, the, uh, Mr. Gossett, who is leaving us after this meeting. It will be his last meeting, so I hope you'll be on your best behavior uh, <laughs> today. <laughs> on a rare occasion, um, he was sorely missed within the planning department, and he's moving to Bath, uh, to work in Bath. Very sad, I think, on behalf of all of us, how much we miss Mr. Gossett. We wish him the very best for the future. Yeah. I, think, I won't ask you to vote on that. To, <laughs> I don't think it would cause embarrassment, but uh, we'll move on then. Right, we'll move on to the um, first application, which is the site adjacent to Homelands Orcock. Um, Mr. Gossett, perhaps you will give your presentation. We just ask the public speakers to move to their position. Yeah, cool. Can the public speakers move to the presentation? Right, we have um, <coughs> Mr. Ragler, who speaks on behalf of uh, Orca Parish Council, and Miss Mr. Shaw, who speaks Mrs. Ragler, I should say, and Mr. Shaw, who will speak as a, a local resident. Um, the local board me member, Councillor Fagan, will make her presentation from uh, from by Zoom after the other presentations. Mr. Gossett. Thank you, Chairman, and uh, good morning, good morning, members. Um, the application site is marked by the usual red star on the slide. Uh, it is located within the settlement of Orcock Hill. The parish of Orcock has a draft neighbourhood development plan, which has recently gone through Regulation 14 consultation. Given the early stage of development of the NDP, it should only be given limited weight today. As such, the core strategy is a sole document forming, forming the development plan for this application. The application seeks full planning permission for the erection of a single residential dwelling. The site has previously benefited from outline permission for the erection of a dwelling under reference number 172896. This was not implemented and has since expired. The application is being recommended for approval as set out in the officer's report. Next slide, please. Here, the application site is marked by the red edge and is surrounded by residential development. It is currently an unused parcel of land that was historically associated with the adjacent dwelling. Orcock Hill is identified within the core strategy as being a settlement that should be the main focus of residential development. The second image, the aerial image, is slightly outdated as members that attended the site as yesterday will note, as it does not reflect the more recent development to the northeast of the site. <laughs> the application site itself is elevated above the Village Link Road, or Wilkes Road, which forms the southwest boundary of the site. Dwellings opposite the site are below the level of the road and therefore sensitive to amenity and visual impacts. Next slide, please. Here is the block plan. The proposed dwelling is a detached dwelling set out over two floors, with the first floor being contained within the roof space, benefiting from dormer windows and roof lights. The dwelling is proposed to include four double bedrooms on the first floor, with living accommodation across the ground floor. The dwelling has a gross internal area of 182 square metres, making it a large four bedroom dwelling. The dwelling maintains the established building line of that adjacent uh, dwelling, homelands on the street, and it's set back into the plot. <laughs> Given the local topography, the dwelling will sit slightly lower than the dwellings to the northeast and northwest of the site, but above the level of the road and the dwellings to the south and southwest. Next slide, please. For the benefit of the members that weren't able to attend the site visit, here are some photos to provide context to the site before we look at the elevations. The green photo was taken from the access point onto the village link road, looking up the road with the site to the right hand side of the photo, and numbers three and four Wilkes Road to the left. The red photo shows the application site in the center of the photo, with number one, the trees, to the right hand side. The blue photo is taken from within the application site, approximately where the driveway is proposed 
looking across at numbers three and four works right. Next slide, please. The green photo from the, is taken from the proposed parking area on site, looking south along Village Link Road, and shows the relationship from the site to Wilkes Road dwellings. The red photo is taken from north of the application site, with the access to a, the adjacent dwelling named Homelands on the left. And you, members can just see the ridge line of number one of the trees over the top of the fence line. And it's behind that fence that the dwelling is proposed. The blue photo is from within the application site again, approximately where the dwelling is proposed, looking across the village link road towards Fountain View and Old Oak House, which are the dwellings directly opposite the site. Next slide, please. As shown on the site layout, access is gained to the village link road from the shared access to the tree site, with parking and turning provided on the site for three cars. It is recommended that an electrical, electric vehicle charging point is secured by condition, and this was proposed as part of the application through the completed climate change checklist, which also included a proposal for air source heat pumps and thermal efficiency measures. Next slide, please. Here, members will see the proposed elevations of the dwelling alongside the floor plans. The dwelling is of a two-story design, utilizing half dormers to keep the eaves and ridge height low. Externally, the dwelling is predominantly lime render above a brick plinth, and it will be roofed in clay tiles. The subservient gable extension of the side will be timber clad. Next slide. Here, members will see the proposed street scene and cross sections of the site. That top image um, makes it clear the ridge line will be slightly higher than that of the adjacent homelands. The second image on the, at the bottom is a cross section through the site and shows uh, that number one, the trees to the rear of the site on the left hand side, then the proposed dwelling in the center, and then to the right hand side is the passing public highway beyond the site, uh, below the site. And then again to the right hand side of that is residential development. Uh, both Old Oak House and Fountain View are shown there. Next slide, please. Thank you. Here is the proposed landscaping scheme, which includes additional planting across the <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this is the proposed landscaping scheme, which shows additional planting across the front boundary, completing that front boundary hedgerow across the access. Uh, and it shows some trees as well, additionally planted behind the existing and proposed hedgerows, as well as the retained yew tree that members would have seen yesterday on site. It is considered that these trees will help to filter views of the site when approaching along the village link road and when um, residing opposite the site on the dwellings. Next slide, please. Uh, the application proposes to utilise a package treatment plant to deal with foul waste, with final discharge to an on-site drainage field. Surface water from impermeable areas will be dealt with by way of an on-site soakaway, and then there will be permeable paving for the driveway. The application has been supported by infiltration testing that in fact has identified acceptable infiltration rates across the relevant areas of the site, and I believe that is because they have identified a sandstone layer suitable to the proposed drainage field and surface water soap point. The proposed drainage strategy and supporting infiltration testing has been reviewed by, in detail by the Council's consultant land drainage engineers at BBLB. Following this extensive review of the proposal, surrounding constraints, local representations and neighbouring scheme, they have raised no objection to the proposed strategy as they consider it to be policy compliant. Excuse me policy compliance and deliverable. The site lies within the Garen Brook subcatchment of the River Wide SAC, and the Council's ecologist has completed the HRA appropriate assessment, which concluded there would be no likely significant effects on the integrity of the SAC if mitigation is secured by condition, and Natural England has raised no objection to that conclusion. Finally, and in summary, the application site lies within the settlement boundary identified in the draft NDP, Officers are acutely aware of the local representations that on the whole suggest a smaller single storey dwelling would be better suited to the site. This, however, officers assessment proposed form of development is an appropriate response to local character and in accordance with the development plan. Furthermore, 
Members are not being asked whether a smaller scheme would be better suited, but rather is the current scheme in accordance with policy. The proposed drainage strategy has been reviewed by the Council's consultant engineers who have confirmed that it is viable and in accordance with policy. Finally, the parish of Alcott has a minimum growth target of 14%, which equates to 26 dwellings over the planned period. Given the constraints of the parish, it has been difficult to achieve this level of growth. And this is illustrated in the draft NDP, which includes a proposed growth figure, five dwellings short of that minimum target. As such, securing a windfall site such as this is particularly important. Overall, the proposed development is considered to accord with the development plan and help to address the undersupply of housing presence in the parish. It is accordingly recommended for approval as set out in the officer's report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gossett. Can I now invite Mr. Reidler to speak on behalf of Alcock Parish Council? You have three minutes. I don't know if I'm going to need the microphone. Can you all hear me? Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. My name is Jane Rigler, R I G L E R, Rigler. I'm Vice Chairman of Alcock Parish Council. And the council strongly objects to this application for a large four bedroom property as infill building within the Orcock Hill Hamlet. The outlight planning for this site was approved for a bungalow. This site is elevated well above its lane side position, which you've seen. And the parish council considered the overlooking of neighboring properties to be of great concern. A concern that the planning officers held at the time and consequently approval was given under conditions that this aspect affecting the local residents amenity should be reviewed. The application, this application is for a much larger two storey property in terms of height and frontage. The house has been moved forward on the plot and is therefore closer to the lane side, being even more overlooking of neighbouring properties and significantly affects the privacy of immediate neighbours and in conflict with core, core strategy SD1. It will completely change the skyline and build full on the lane side currently comprising two bungalows and a small stone cottage. The proposed building frontage will be much higher and wider than its neighbouring properties. It will stand out like a sore thumb. Local low-rise dwellings are the primary feature in the parish, and the parish council considers that in conjunction with their neighbourhood development plan, there is no further requirement for large detached houses in this area. I've spoken to this committee before about an other major concern, and that is drainage of stormwater and foul water treatment and its disposal. The area is already subject to flash flooding from hillside runoff onto the lane, affecting overflow into South Lane side properties. Several sewage treatment plants emit strong odours, and the Copywell Brook at the lane end is subject to environmental agency enforcement notice. And I remember in the past hosting a visit from the committee to smell the dreadful smell at the bottom of the lane. The proposed stormwater treatment for this site deals only with the runoff from the roof. The treatment of surface runoff being said to be allowed to drain over the sloping site and onto the lane. The lane side ditch has become blocked and ineffective. This, totally, this is totally unacceptable to residents in this area and surely in conflict with policy SD3. The foul water treatment by package treatment plant is to be dispersed for final effluent treatment in a drainage field two and a half metres below site level and below the lane. This site and the tree site are reported to not be subject Thank to... You. Thank you, Matt. Uh, three minutes to a, Last well, words, high water table, but this has been disproved. I'm sorry. Okay. Can I now call upon uh, Mr Shaw, a local resident, to speak? You will have three minutes. Can you hear my voice adequately? I'll, yeah. to yeah. Yeah. I'll try and keep it up at my age. You never know. 
Uh, I'm, a, I'm speaking on behalf of residents. Uh, I'm also a parish councillor. I agree with what Jane and the parish council firmly believe. Uh, I'm also a member of the steering group, which is producing our current MDP. Instead of the online outline approved modest bungalow that Jane mentioned, set 30 meters, 33 meters from my property, uh, we're now faced with a 17, 17 meter wide frontage, four bed house, two stories with a rich height, five meters higher than mine, and forced forward above the existing building line due to the truncated shape of the site, and now only 25 meters away from my property. This house is compared to the trees property, but it is five meters wider than those four bedroom houses and its lane side. It will dominate the skyline. It will overlook neighboring properties, affecting light, privacy, and its large mass will be out of character with the built form. This will not safeguard the residential amenity or local distinctiveness, and therefore opposes core strategy SD1. Our drainage concerns, effluent treatment, smells, high water table, flash flooding, major concerns for Orcott Hill, being drained into the Y catchment by the Cockerwell Brook. The Orcott Parish NDP has set strong policies to ensure robust design of storm and foul water treatment systems, and the Heritage Council appropriate assessment has, proved, has pr proposed even stronger wording to protect the River Y SAC. <coughs> Claims by the drainage engineer at this site and the trees do not have high ground water are best said as incorrect. A similar drainage field on the trees, which he designed, only 1.6 metres deep, failed in December 2020, less than two months after the first occupancy moved in on Christmas Eve, actually, a nice time. Uh, the situation was formally reported to and witnessed by Balfour Beatty. It's a matter of record. The, uh, the failure was due to high, high groundwater flooding. This proposed design is set two meters on the ground in sandstone, lowering the landscape, and is guaranteed to be flooded by rising groundwater. Effluent treatment must develop in well oxygenated soil close to the surface. Ground testing was done in dry conditions in June 2020. That must render the water infiltration results as inadmissible to start with. And no attempt was made to identify the annual groundwater variation by soil colouring. Both points are critical to design and required by building regulations. As a retired professional engineer myself, in consideration of these quite clear facts, it must be concluded that the design of the drainage field is unsafe. The roof stormwater soak away design will be similarly unsafe. Thank you. I'm afraid I've got to to draw your I'm sorry. comments. I'll complete the handle there, last thing. Right, we'll now go to the local member, Councillor Fagin, all of the debate. I've got a statement on behalf of the applicant's agent. Oh, right, sorry, I, I didn't realize we've got a statement on behalf of the applicant's agent. It's a supporting statement to the Planning Regulatory Committee meeting on Wednesday, 16th of March, from uh, David Bow, Planning Consultant and Architect. Council's professional case officer has pre presented a thorough and comprehensive assessment of all relevant planning policy and technical design considerations relating to this application within his report, and has concluded unequivocally that there are no considerations which would warrant refusal of this application on applicable technical or planning policy grounds. As you've already heard, these application proposals are considered by the Council's professional officers and external statutory consultees to meet the benchmark of acceptability in respect of all applicable technical considerations. 16 objectors to this application have submitted representations contending that there is no identified local demand for additional housing in the area, particularly for bedroom dwellings, that the proposal would represent overdevelopment within the plot, resulting in unacceptable loss of privacy and amenity to its neighbours, together with a myriad of additional concerns relating to highways impact, drainage, flooding, ecology and landscaping. 
However, the consultation responses summarised within your case officer's report demonstrate that such concerns are entirely groundless. The demonstrable reality is that there is an identified need for a minimum of 17 additional dwellings within all Cotton Hill within the remaining planned period. Notwithstanding that the draft all cop NDP is at a stage where only limited weight can be afforded in determining this application, it doesn't include any housing land allocations or commitments to address the minimum requirement and current undersupply. This application cited within the main built up part of the assessment provides an ideal opportunity to reduce this current local undersupply in part. The proposal for the siting of a single modest detached dwelling within a plot approaching one third of an acre represents very low density housing development by any current measure of the term. And were it not for the particular constraints of this site, the proposal may otherwise be considered to represent inefficient use of housing plans. The proposed design solution is considered by your professional officers to be entirely appropriate to its site setting. The physical separation distance between the proposed dwelling and its closest facing neighbors comfortably exceeds the dimension which Heritage Council acknowledges to represent acceptable separation. Notwithstanding the elevated, elevated site topography of the application site to that of the properties opposite, the specific context of existing mature perimeter hedging, together with the fact that dwellings opposite sit behind outbuildings, will result in negligible impact to the privacy and residential amenity of those dwellings. As detailed by the case officer, this application proposal is considered to represent sustainable development and as such a presumption in favour applies. In the absence of any adverse impacts identified with, which demonstrably outweigh the benefits when assessed against the policies of the framework or any conflicts identified, and that's true. Thank you. We'll now move to the local ward member who will open up the debate, Councillor Fagan, who will be speaking remotely. She um, will speak at the end of the debate as well. Uh, she has the right to speak at the end of the debate. She does not have a vote. Councillor Fagan. Yes, good morning and uh, thank you to, to all the councillors who came to the site visit yesterday and for taking the time to actually walk around and, and look at the um, um, the situation on the ground and also thank you to Mr Gossett for his report and um, um, I, I, it's regrettable that our sort of final exchange will be one in, in which I, I have to um, sort of uh, um, contradict his, his outcome on this application but I must support residents in this, this case. Um, Whilst we realise that the NDP only has limited weight, its policies were considered, considered relevant by the planning inspector in rejecting a recent appeal on land next to Orcop Village Hall. And so we must bear in mind that uh, bear the NDP in mind when making decisions on this site. Sitting behind the Orcop NDP a raft of is a raft of information about the area. In 2011, 81% of homes had three bedrooms or more and under occupancy was a notable feature with four fifths having more bedrooms and rooms than required. 64% have two or more cars due to the rural location and the lack of public transport, the county average being 41%. Policy Orcop 4, based on resident surveys and support, says that development should be in character with the built form of adjoining development in terms of siting, height, scale, detailing, density. And this sits alongside core strategy um, policy SD1 with regard to respecting scale, height, proportions, and massing of surrounding development to safeguard residential amenity for existing and proposed residents. Originally, we have heard the site accommodated a bungalow alongside other bungalows on the upward slopes of Orcop Hill. Residents with long recall understand that for the past 40 years, development management has protected the amenity of houses on the other side of Wilkes Row, the drinking water of the Copy Well, and ensured protection against flooding from the various springs which pop out of these hills with a fluctuating water table. In terms of amenity, and I will try not to repeat too many of the points that have been raised by the parish council, but the, the site known as the trees now has three new houses and this application would take that site to four. Um, originally, 
there was a bungalow on that whole site. Orcott Parish Council have always stated that only a bungalow would be in keeping with the rest of the area. And in the 2017 initial refusal, the planning officer said that the existing dwellings lie to the west of substantially lower ground across the road. And it is considered that the potential for loss of privacy is very high in this instance, given the proximity of existing and proposed use. This was policy SD1, failure to safeguard residential immunity for residents. Uh, an outline application quickly followed that refusal, which was indicative of a bungalow with an 11 meter fun frontage. The application you see before you today is for a bigger, closer and higher house in every respect. Whilst the second floor has been included in the roof space with dormer windows, compared to the bungalows which set the street scene alongside it, this is an application for a much larger house. Yes, it sits alongside three new houses at the trees, but these are set back on the hill. And this is a wide house with a 17 meter frontage sitting on the downward slope of Orcop Hill that will dominate the street scene from many angles. The plans showing homelands and the telegraph pole alongside it help to put in context the proposed ridge height of the house. And there is no doubt it will dominate its setting as the hill slopes down towards the copy well. Objections to the application are not about building on the site. It is accepted that the house will be, a house will be built here, but it is about what type of building is on the site and the scale of the proposal. There is unanimous opinion in ORCOP that this house should be a low rise building. Whilst the applicant has made a point of saying that they are willing to engage with local views, locals do not feel this has been forthcoming an invitation extended by myself to meet with residents was declined, and there are some who feel that because pre-application advice was sought, approval is considered a fait accompli and objections are being ignored. You have heard substantial <coughs> evidence about the drainage on Orcop Hill, um, which has five natural spring, springs seemingly popping out of nowhere when it's wet due to its particular geology. And this is relevant because the reason that ORCOP has been unable to meet its, its housing targets is because development on ORCOP Hill is simply not sustainable given the geology. Uh, the same engineers who did the percolation testing and drainage for the trees, which where you've heard there was a failure within two months of occupation, have designed the scheme for this property. And residents argue that, that the scheme was unable originally to support three houses at the trees due to the high water table. Obviously, there are issues with percolation testing being taken in dry summers, contrary to advice about testing um, being undertaken during extremes in weather. The proposed drainage uh, design is set two meters below the ground and has a drainage field in fractured sandstone, allowing water to collect effluent on its way to the tributaries that feed the Gamba and the Wai. Yet building regulations state that sewage effluent must be in contact with aerobic oxygenated soil particles in order to break down effluent and science accepts that these aerobic particles are not found below one meter. This being the case, I cannot understand why professionals are accepting a scheme that does not meet building standards and is in danger of allowing effluent to flow off the site and into the water system that drain these hills. Residents argue that the drainage field must sit above the water table. And there are other proposals that could be looked at uh, redesigning the drainage field. There is also concern about the proposed stormwater system and its impact on flooding um, on Wilkes Row, uh, where residents regularly have to stop water flowing into their driveways during storms. My final point is just about the appropriate assessment, because there is real concern that the springs in Orcop are insignificant to development proposals and not even mapped by Natural England which states that drainage fields should be 50 meters from hydrological source. This one is 30 meters. In recent history, people drew drinking water from the copy well, and uh, Mark Willimont himself has recalled testing it as an environmental health officer. The copy well now sits under enforcement notice from the Environment Agency. 
The NDP have been told, the group have been told by Herefordshire Council that their proposed plans need to tighten up on their own appropriate assessment because it does not contain specific nutrient neutrality policies and that they have a duty under the Water Framework Directive to ensure that proposals for growth do not adversely affect the river water quality. All of the concern around drainage sits in the context of the River Wye, which is 6.5 kilometers from Orcop, and until amendments are made, it cannot be concluded that there will be any likely significant effects on the integrity of the River Wye SAC. These recommendations from Herefordshire Council sit in the gall of those who believe that the drainage system being supported by Herefordshire Council in this application will have a direct impact on the Copywell and the Gamba Brook, which is already failing with high phosphate levels, and consequently the Y Valley SAC. They are being told that habitats regulation assessment must be taken with legal and scientific certainty and with a precautionary approach. But the, Residents do not believe that there is legal or scientific certainty that the or that the precautionary approach, approach has been followed here. This is all relevant because the impact of housing on the site could be limited by a smaller dwelling and one not designed for six people. I will um, have a final word at the end of the day, debate, but I look forward to the debate. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Can I now open the debate for generally? <coughs> Councillor Bowen, I think. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. An interesting morning yesterday. And I believe Orcop Hill is a very interesting site and full of problems in this case, I believe. And I think what has been said so far is very pertinent and valid. And all I can really do is just emphasize that I think we sympathize. It's a big building they're trying to put there. It should be a smaller one, a much smaller one, less. It's a, it's a modest building. It is not a modest building. It is very, very proud of itself and full of itself, I think, uh, what, what is actually laid before us. And it will be dominating and overlooking and overbearing on the street scene below, I do believe. I'm very concerned about the drainage. Uh, the sandstone, very permeable sandstone, will take whatever water or other nutrients are put into it, a very long way. And I fear for the safety of the, the well. I do not think that will be ever uh, usable if you're getting out all from a drainage system into there. And how much further does that sandstone strata go? Does it go straight to the Y or where does it go to? I think it's, we should be thinking about that. Um, and I really, really think we need to rethink the whole drainage system and also the size of this house. It is too big on this particular site, considering its neighbors and its overbearingness of the, of the fields of the houses below. Can we please come back with a better proposition, not what we have here now? Thank you. Right. I've got no other speakers with the councillor. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Um, Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you for the report, um, uh, Mr. Gossett. And I'd like to say thank you for breaking down the public um, representations. I found that actually very useful and I hope that other planner, planning officers take, uh, take your lead. Um, I'd also like to say thank you for the hedging and the holes and the fences, hedgehog holes and the fences um, as part of the design. But I also agree with uh, Councillor Bowen, um, and I'm very grateful to the representations made by the parish council and residents. Um, the quality or character of an area um, and elements, uh, the, this design will contribute to um, people's lives. You know, it will affect uh, privacy levels. The proximity to the other buildings will result in an oppressive environment. Is there overshadowing? And um, does the design promote a good standard of amenity? And these are all notes in the technical note when you're looking at um, assessing residential amenity. I think sustainable development incorporates a social role which seeks to secure well-designed, strong, vibrant, and healthy communities. What I'm concerned is that this building, as um, one of the speakers said, is, is really going to be um, a blot on the landscape. It will be seen. And 
will actually indeed cause an, op an, an oppressive environment. Thank you. Right. Councillor Harrington. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, my concerns are around drainage, which have been um, laid out by several different people. Um, I wonder if Mr. Gossett can tell me, was, was this a desktop site um, review by an article <laughs> drainage consultant as part of BT, or did people attend uh, the site? That's the first question. I'm also concerned that of the five proposed pits to be dug, as indicated by the process on the original plans, only three were done, and they were done in June. And I'm just wondering um, if we have any, if there are any regulations around having um, more comprehensive um, surveys, or whether that's simply up to the to the, to the applicants, drainage consultants. Um, I'm concerned about the size of the soakway. I'm also concerned that the drainage consultants for the applicants don't appear to mention in their report the failure, fairly well accepted, documented for failure of December 2020. I wasn't sure if it was February 21 or December 2020. Um, that, that had a significant effect um, on the surrounding area. So I, I'm just a bit concerned that that hadn't seemed to be addressed uh, in, in any way by either the applicants, consultants, or our own uh, consultants about the meeting. And I'm very concerned that the well, which is so close, is essentially, you know, by all accounts, well, it has got an enforcement notice on it by DEA. So I'm surprised that Natural England haven't objected to that. So those, those things worry and confuse me. And I don't feel I'm really in a position to make a really good, a good decision on that basis at the moment. Mr. Gossett, do you want to uh, yeah. come that one? Two points? <clears throat> yeah, I'll, uh, I'll try and answer the questions in, in order they came. Um, no site visit was undertaken by Alpha BT engineers. Um, my understanding is they don't visit sites to make their assessment. Uh, it's based on the reports that are submitted in support of that application. Um, yes, you're correct to note that there, there was five crosses on the um, infiltration testing map, but only three were undertaken. My understanding that was because they didn't find any difference in the soil strata across the three pits, so they didn't dig the extra two. Um, and that was addressed in the drainage comments because um, I know BBLP went back to them on that point. Um, in terms of, is there any requirement for more comprehensive surveys? Uh, I don't think there's any uh, formal requirements. It's a case by case basis when the engineers need more information, they'll request it, as they did in this case. Um, and they, they didn't appear to address um, the failure of the adjacent PTP directly in their comments, although I know they were aware of it because we had discussions with them about that matter and they read the representations and asked questions of the applicant um, about that. And it's in the published correspondence on the website. Uh, so they were aware of it, but they didn't specifically address it in the comments. I think that was all the questions. And the last one was just in relation to the Copywell Brook, uh, the Copywell Well. I, I'm afraid I, can, you can't, I, I don't know the answer, no, no, no. whether Natural England were aware of that. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. Councillor Norman. Uh, thank you very much. And um, uh, I don't want to repeat the uh, comments we've heard already, but I, I absolutely agree with most of what we've heard. In particular, the, um, the size of this dwelling, um, having originally been, I think the, the original application was for a much smaller bungalow, this seems to be hugely inappropriate, this much, much larger dwelling on this site. It appears to be moved much closer to the road. It appears to be much more um, overpowering and uh, overbearing in relation to other, um, other dwellings. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to be at the uh, site visit. I, I regret that because it does make a huge difference if you can be there. But I must say that some of the pictures I've seen and the comments I've heard and discussions I've had with others who did attend have helped a great deal. Um, the biggest issue, I think, seems to be the, uh, the drainage concerns. Absolutely understand the, the worries of residents. And let's remember, residents are the ones who live with this. Residents are familiar with the day-to-day -day aspects of any development, of any activity in their area. And I think we do well to listen to them. Um, it does concern me very much to hear that the testing was only done in June. That seems incredibly uh, short-sighted and not terribly helpful, really. In a situation like this um, and uh, I think there are a range of concerns that have been raised which we need to know an awful lot more about before we uh, could make a decision. Um, it's also just a, a point to make and it's something I've just come back onto planning after a couple of years off but it's an issue that used to come up endlessly uh, in previous years on planning was 
the refusal of the applicant to meet with residents. So much could be sorted out with goodwill and with <coughs> working together and listening and getting the very best for everybody involved. Um, you know, there may be aspects which residents are never going to be happy with, may not be able to resolve that, but some sort of exchange and interaction can surely help. And if you don't get that, you feel, or I would feel frustrated and feel, well, you know, there isn't really an interest in getting what's best for everybody. So I am very concerned. And finally, just to say that the point raised by the <laughs> local member about the potential <coughs> input on the why should be of huge concern to all of us. And it, 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 it bothers me that Natural England are not more onto this than they appear to be. But with all the mixture of concerns of drainage and flooding and soakaways and all the rest, I, I don't think I feel fully informed. I have anxieties about a lot of the points that have already been made. Thank you. Councillor Rowan and then Councillor Rowan. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Chair. I made loads of notes, so if it's a bit incoherent, that's not my fault. Uh, Councillor Fagan and our two parish council uh, speakers have informed and to a certain degree educated me this morning, so I'd say thank you for that. Um, the package treatment plant of the adjacent building, we've heard of the December 2020 Christmas Eve, I believe, where we were informed. Uh, if, if that failed, is, is that part of the reason? I know this is not part of this application, but it makes your mind follow up. Did that failure lead to a, uh, the issues that were now being seen in the Gambler? Um, why was only one test taken in, I think Councillor Norman touched on that, why was only one test taken in the height of the summer? And if, it, if the timing of the application means it's got to be a, a summer test, why not have a, a couple of them? Uh, that's a process maybe looking at. I, when I was doing my reading yesterday, I was looking at this proposal with a keen eye and thinking, you know, yes, it is overbearing, but we've got the professional reports. But I'm afraid to say, Chair, with everything I've heard from the parish council and from Councillor Fagan, my confidence in this is completely shot. So I'll be interested to see what our uh, my colleagues have got to say for <coughs> Oh, okay, Councillor Milmore and then Councillor Mill. Yeah, it um, seems to me that the, um, the main issue here is drainage. Um, however, from what I've heard, I understand that a bungalow would be acceptable as opposed to a two story building. Can you tell me, in terms of drainage, um, what would the difference be between a, a bungalow, say a four bedroom bungalow, and a four bedroom two story building? Would there be any material difference in drainage? Uh, if it was the same capacity in terms of residence, then I can't see why there'd be any difference between a bungalow and a two-storey dwelling in terms of drainage. So in terms of acceptability for this um, application, drainage is not really relevant. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, I, I think it's very relevant, um, but perhaps I think we're going to get the difference between a bungalow and a, and a two-storey dwelling. Well, um, I don't see why the drainage strategy would need to be different for a bungalow. Um, in 2018, obviously, considerations were very different to what they are today in, in regards to drainage with impact on the Y. Uh, there wasn't a drainage strategy approved at the point of that previous outline uh, that was approved on the site. Right, so uh, if it was a bungalow, it would be no difference in terms of drainage. Yeah, I think it, you'd have the same. So, so the, the real nut here is not really the drainage, it's the, um, it's the amenity, the size of the building. I think I'd leave for members to decide, but yeah, sure. Councillor Mill. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> uh, I just, I, my comment is around really uh, uh, policies LD1 and SS6 for landscape, but local distinctiveness and environmental quality. And I just, uh, I, I, I know that I don't at all disagree with uh, the observations made by many members and certainly by the representatives uh, that this, this, this is a building which is uh, out of scale for its site and uh, would un undoubtedly dominate the, um, the, the, the community. I, I, um, I, very often, though, it is possible to mitigate uh, these effects by improvements in design. And if you remember those, um, I mean, all members will, will, will remember that uh, a council, I introduced a motion whereby uh, 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 we implement a, an award scheme to 
uh, acknowledge good design efforts that have been specifically made to 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 um, uh, uh, support our county plan objectives for um, improving uh, design and, and our special design special planning document for for, for our design for SPD, which is an emerging uh, document, and I. Um, I, 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 I just um, looked at, at the planning site meeting yesterday, looked around at some of the other houses in the, in the community, particularly Homely, which is um, the Stone Cottage below, and, um, uh, and also Woodbine Cottage, another stone cottage in, in, the, in the village, which uh, probably dating from the early 19th century. And uh, uh, because they're built out of the most vernacular materials, you hardly notice them. They are they blend within the within the uh, in, into the into the landscape most superbly. I, I even noticed that the, um, the the little bus station, little bus stop, had been built out of the local stone, and it really is local stone. They probably were, just would have dug a hole on the site of the cottage, dug whatever stone they required. I'd be who carried it any distance and built the house out of it. Uh, and uh, I, I just. Um, uh, uh, note with with a degree of re regret that no, that the architect has not thought well if you're going to dig a 20 meter long hole that's going to be eight feet deep for this drainage field which 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 appears into sandstone why uh, you wouldn't recruit some of that sandstone and do something with it uh, and wouldn't that be the sustainable thing to do rather than building a house out of concrete blocks uh, well I mean maybe they'd say that wouldn't be wouldn't be entirely practical but uh, it, that's the sort of thing, sort of thinking that would uh, impress me. Um, and and if we had, uh, if we ever get going with that, with I hope we do with the, with the, with the, with the a design award scheme, the judges of the design award scheme. So um, th those those sorts of thoughts have not been thought through on this. It is very much a kind of metro land vernacular scheme that we've been presented with, and I'm afraid I'm not minded to support it. Thank you, Chair. Mm. Councillor Andrews. <clears throat> well, it's a great pity, I think, that the original application <laughs> of Bungalow would not, did not proceed. Uh, and I can fully understand the anxiety of uh, the local residents over the current very large proposal. But I am worried there are no objections from all the statute consultees and the um, the drainage engineer seems to feel that the drainage system that proposed is adequate, although we hear from the locals they have grave doubts about that. But I do wonder if we refuse this application, where perhaps a legal person could give us the advice, where we would stand if the applicant went to appeal on this. Right. Um, I'm sure we'll get the legal opinion right when we finally finish the room. I do notice the, the concern about the dominance. I have to say, if one looks at the map on page 46, one sees that the trees, whilst it is not dominant to the, the particular lane we went up, but it is surely more dominant, the larger of the buildings in that locality to, to other areas within, uh, within Orca. Um, right, uh, are there any other? Councillor Wilding, sorry. Thank you, Chair. I too uh, couldn't make the, um, the site visit. I apologise for that. Um, if, if this committee decides, as I hope it will, to uh, that this application should go back to the drawing board, then I would hope that besides the scale of the development, the applicant would instruct their architect to seriously consider a totally new approach in terms of sustainability. For, for instance, the orientation of the property. I know I go on about that all the time, but the orientation of the property given the site could be much better so that solar panels could be added in the future. And all the other things that a modern building should concern itself with to address the climate and the ecological emergency. But we're about to experience a massive increase in costs of energy we are on the verge of an ecological disaster. So why are not architects recognizing the need to design buildings that suit this new reality? This building 
it just looks like it's come out of uh, some side street in Romford 20 years ago. Uh, I want to see them go back and make an attempt to not only satisfy the local need for it to suit the area, but to actually address the problems that are coming with climate and ecological emergency. And until that happens, I'm always going to vote against all these designs. Thanks. Can I just say, I think our legal officer would have something to say about that, because that implies pre Well, they're not looking at the climate emergency but, but coming either. Predetermination. And we have to, this is a quasi-judicial process. We have to uh, deal with these matters within the rules of, with the, of, of, of planning rules, not, not, not our own personal. Um, and that's so, what and we're not. A, we're not a design committee. We are a planning committee. Just remind members, Councillor Watson. Do you want to come back? Yes, please, um, Chair. I'm just wondering if it's possible for us to defer to actually have drainage, because the drainage is seen, does seem to be quite an issue and concern for many of the committee members. And because, yeah, I think that for the technical qualities of the drainage, particularly, um, you know, to, to be done in a, you know, in a wet season rather than in the, the summer. I'm just wondering if that's possible. Mr. Banks, um, do you want to say something? Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, I think as far as officers are concerned, um, our view is that the application has been very thoroughly investigated in all regards. Um, as Councillor Andrew says, we've, uh, technical um, consultee responses, um, particularly in regard to drainage matters. Um, our cons uh, drainage engineers are very familiar with the issues around drainage in Orcop. I'm aware that this committee has debated that previously. Um, they've looked at all of the matters um, that, have, um, uh, that have been raised by local residents. And our view is, in truth, that we think you should make a decision based on the application as it is at the moment, um, because I don't really think that there's an awful lot more to be gained from deferring the application um, and seeking further information. I'm not sure what further information we could be requesting. You've discussed um, the timing of um, the porosity tests. As officers, the government set us targets to determine applications within a prescribed period. Um, so it wouldn't be reasonable for us, for um, instance, to say to a, an applicant or an agent who submitted their application in the summer that we would defer their application on drainage grounds because we want them to undertake further for us to test in winter months. We have to determine the application based on the information that is provided to us um, and as I've said as far as our land drainage consult, uh, colleagues are concerned they have looked at the, the information that's been provided in some detail they are very familiar with the matters in Orcop um, and they have ultimately said that they consider that the um, proposals are acceptable as far as the, the possibility that the, the system might fail. Yes, it might fail, but there are other controls in place that would deal with that. Um, and the MPPF is quite clear uh, as, as far as those matters are concerned that those shouldn't influence the determination of the planning application. So as I say, I think my, my advice to you uh, or my request is that you determine the application uh, on the basis and uh, what is submitted. You could be quiet, please. I think the other issue that has arisen um, relates specifically to the scale and the design of, of the proposed dwelling. That's a very subjective matter. And of course, members are of the view that the design is not reflective uh, of the surrounding area, then you can of course make a judgment about that. There's been a lot of talk as well about the outline permission that was granted and the fact that well, there's a perception that it was granted for a bungalow. Indeed, it did on the indicative plans say that it was a bungalow, but there was no condition 
proposed on the outline of permission requiring it to be a bungalow. So when you are considering the, the suitability of this proposal, I would say that you shouldn't use that outline permission as your baseline. You really need to consider that in terms of your assessment of this proposal in itself, in and of itself, and what impacts you think that that has on the surrounding area. Jack. Councillor did you want to say, ask a question? Uh, no, I was uh, an awful lot of hesitancy in the room here. Uh, I, I was going to propose that, uh, I make a proposal that we um, accept the office recommendation. That way we can uh, yeah. get to the other bit. So we've already had this proposal to I, I didn't, I, you may have made a proposal, but it wasn't formally made, and I didn't I, I notice, I don't know if anybody else did a second. Yeah? No, no. Chair. And I certainly said I would second. That's right. Oh, the oh, legal, our legal representative. Yeah, can you, can you hear me okay? Yes. That's fine. Um, Councillor Watson, obviously, when she, she sort of like came back on the last point, um, said about a proposal, but she said a proposal to defer on drainage ground technical, technicalities of drainage um, and looking at the, obviously the winter over the summer when we're talking about uh, um, digging digging the, the boreholes but there was it wasn't a formal proposal, it wasn't taken up as a proposal, it wasn't seconded at that point in time. Council Rowan has made a proposal to an article which has been seconded by Councillor Millmore. Are there any other points anyone else to make? I, I realise <coughs> that um, if one votes against this, one has to come up with sound planning reasons why we have a report in front of us. I know quite a lot of us are not very happy with the, with the proposal but they need to be sound planning reasons if one is going to reject this particular report and the recommendations as outlined by the officers, bearing in mind that there have been no statutory objections, consultee objections to this particular application. Councilor Millman, did you want to say yeah, that? I, I, the reason I'm seconding this is um, I think the drainage is a bit of a red herring because as I said, um, no one is objecting to a building being put on this land if, if for instance they said well we can't have any building on this land because the drain is that then it could be an issue so the main thing is the um is the size of the building and you know one owns the view um so i'm happy to support this application and I, I think a lot of the arguments that we've been having about drainage are not really relevant to this and the, most of the arguments i've heard are subjective and not material so I'm, I'm happy to support this application. Okay, well, we have a um, motion before the committee. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I can't, but perhaps the officer, Mr. Banks, or Mr. Mr. Our case officer, do you want to make any comments before I come to council? I think Mr. Banks made the comments. No, no, no further comments. Then we'll move to the local member. Um. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think I think what the policy SD one on amenity is actually the the policy that um, members would be able to use to refuse this application. And thank you for the debate and for the the you know concerns expressed. I mean, I realise that given that the statutory consultees um, on the water issues have have. Uh, endorsed this application that it makes it very difficult to refuse it on SD3 and SD4, although on the ground, it is very obvious that these are significant issues and, um, you know, to be fair, Balfour Beatty approved the scheme at the trees. Um, which failed within two months of occupation. And the reason it failed is because it was set down in, into the water table. And when the, um, the, when the uh, failure was looked at, um, the, it, the scheme was installed higher up. So, you know, Balfour Beatty missed that in, um, on this exact same site. And, 
Um, to, to be honest, the HRA and Natural England's response are sort of based on the evidence that Belfort BT give them. So I, I have serious concerns about what is happening in terms of drainage. I, I do not feel that this site is, um, is able to accommodate a building of this size and that um, any future schemes should come forward with a smaller unit which can actually um, accommodate the drainage issues on the site. Um, you know, the residents in ORCOP are highly engaged, highly informed in planning issues. They fought successful judicial review on planning in the area. They feel that they, their um, views have been ignored in this case. And I really look to you to look at the evidence and do the right thing by the existing and future residents of ORCOP Hill. And we have core strategy policies to back an argument um, for a developer to come back with proposals for a modest building with a well-designed drainage system, which would support sustainable development. Um, so, you know, obviously the decision sits with you and uh, I thank everybody again, but please, please do, do take the impact of this development into account when you make your decision. Thank you. Right, thank you. Then now we have a final um, com comments in the debate. There is a resolution before the committee for uh, adopting the officer's recommendation. Can I ask for those in favour to indicate, please? Those in favour? That's one, two, three, four. That's four. Those against? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine. That's nine. Can I now have an alternative? Any abstention? Any abstention? Sorry, I didn't think there was. But, uh, uh, sorry, Councillor Watson. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I would like to actually refuse this application based on the overbearing impact caused by the physical presence of a building at scale and mass an oppressive feeling as a result of the development and an intrusive feeling as a result of the development, which is SD1. And SD3, yeah, yeah, three and four. SD1 and two. SD, we, uh, sorry, we have various numbers for it. Uh, SD1, three and four. Yeah, the, uh, Mr. Beck, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, I think that the matters that you, you've raised so far are specific to policy SD1. Yes. SD3 and SD4 relate to drainage matters. That wasn't covered in any of the points that you raised. I, yeah, I was covering SD1. Okay. But if anyone would like to add, I'm happy to put those down if they would like. Councillor Stone. Thank you, Chairman. Also, uh, ORC1 and ORC5 to do with the uh, neighbourhood development plan or the emergent neighbourhood development plan. Um, I, Mr. Gossett, uh, Councillor Stone, as far as those policies are concerned, forgive me, those are ones that are specifically re relevant to the scale and the mass and the design of, of, of the proposal, are they? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Banks, but that's all we should be mentioned. Thank you. Councillor Harrington. I, I think Councillor Stone, OC5 relates to wastewater, I think, I think, I think it's, and I would like to add to what Councillor Watson has said in relation to SD3 and SD4 and drainage. I'm, I'm not satisfied that this is a coherent plan. All right. So specifically, then, can can somebody elaborate perhaps on what those concerns are? My concern, as we've said, is that we have a technical consultee who has said that they have no objection to the application on drainage grounds. So I want to be clear about what those matters are that, that we're worried about. So my concern, Mr. Banks, is that 
the site visit has not taken place. I appreciate that, that that's not always the case. I'm concerned that not sufficient testing has taken place. I'm, con I'm concerned that um, that the mention of the failure previously has not been in the report. Those are my concerns that there has been a previous failure. Are there any other? Um, in terms of the NDP with the one around SV1, it's a uh, ORC 4, was it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, ORC 1, yeah. and ORC 4, which I believe is what Councillor Stone was trying to okay. refer to. Thank you. Okay, now we have a tentative proposal as outlined. Can I ask for now those in favour? Chair, I, I didn't hear a seconder on that I, one. Oh. I did at this time, actually. <laughs> we have Councillor Watson proposed it. Who seconded it? Councillor Norman. Thank you. And, and just before we go to the vote, can you please clarify the policies that you're referring to for refusal matters? Councillor Watson. OK, so I'm objecting on SD1 and um, ORC1 and ORC4, which I think is the overbearing scale um, and SD3 and SD4 as regards um, the technical, um, you know, exactly what Councillor Harrington has asked for, for additional information on the drainage. Um, Chair, may I just address the point? Yes. Thank you. Councillor Andrews asked earlier on for a legal view on whether or not if we refused the application, it went to planning, sorry, it went to the planning inspectorate, what would happen if we went on the grounds that uh, members have mooted. Um, obviously, as, as Mr Banks has, has quite clearly said, that obviously design um, and scale is, is a subjective view. And he has said that obviously you have had uh, statutory consultees saying that the drainage system and scheme is acceptable. Um, so I address Councillor Andrew's view that obviously if we do take we refuse this on the on the policy grounds relating to drainage, then there is a, a likelihood, it's not something to take into account when you're obviously making a decision on this on voting, but there is a likelihood that we will have a cost application made against us. And if there is no justification for refusing on drainage grounds, that will be the point that you will get costs awarded against you at the planning spectrate at the appeal. Thank you. Councillor Watson, which, are you still minding okay. to? Um, could I just listen to Councillor Mill? Councillor Mill. Um, Chair, yes, thank you. When I spoke, I referenced LP4 and SS6. So, in fact, this, this brings in our attention on the grounds of the overbearing size, impact on uh, uh, landscape, the design, uh, in Wiggler's words, stick so like a sore thumb. So, not obviously a planning policy, but uh, uh, LP1 and SS6 were the two policies I referenced when I spoke. Right, so which ones are now <laughs> to stay <laughs> as far as the applicants? The movers of the motion concerned. Sounds like we're being advised to drop the um, press mm -hmm. three and four, which I'm very unhappy about. But, yeah. um, can I just ask that, make one? So, so in relation to SD3 and SD4, I understand the points that our legal officers are making. However, if we as a, as, as, as a committee have serious concerns about those, regardless of whether our professional advisors are telling them or not, and those concerns can be drawn out, and we have drawn them out in this debate today, I am content that they should be included, and I hope other members are. And in relation to what Councillor Millmore was saying about the size, I agree with him. That. that is not an issue of what should be here. It's an issue of anything should be here. So I would like SD3 and SD4 to be included alongside SD1. Right. I, I hope we don't have to be reminded of the later date about that. Chairs. Can it then clarification then, um, Councillor Watson mooted SD1, ORC1, ORC4, SD3 and SD4. Is, um, is Councillor Watson and Councillor Norman quite happy to take those policies forward as, re, as, as refusal? Yeah. And we can't have SS6 around local distinctiveness. 
LD1 and SS6, as, as, as suggested by Councillor Miller. I would defer that one to um, Mr. Banks if he's just able to clarify that they would cover the points that the members are trying to raise. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Evans. Yes, they, they would cover those points. So it is, I think it's reasonable to include those points. Great, thank you. Right, are we finally where we need to be? Those in favour of the proposal, as outlined by, proposed by Councillor Watson and seconded by Councillor Noble. Those in favour? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Against? One, two, three, four, four. And that is carried. We will now have a 10 minute break. You can be make it just 10 minutes. I now welcome you back to the meeting following on our adjournment. Can I request that the public speakers present in person for the agenda item seven join the meeting? Ms. Ms. Heatley, a Withington Group Parish Council, and Mr. Thomas, the, app, the applicant agent. Please, can you take your seats? Public participation. Chair, can I declare a, a personal interest? I know one of the speakers. I realized it before. Thank you. That's always difficult when you suddenly discover, uh, remember many years ago, suddenly discovered when the item came out, it was my cousin. Um, so I moved them quickly. Right, good morning and welcome to the meeting. I will call you to speak following the officer's presentation on the application. Thank you. Mr. Gutter. Thank you, Chairman. Just wait for the presentation to be on the screen for all the members. Thank you. Members are firstly directed to the update sheet for additional photos submitted by Ward Member Councillor Paul Andrews. Um, in addition, officers have clarified the status of Beldo Lake, which I'll return to later, but please uh, see the update sheet for the full um, points on that. Uh, the application lies uh, within the parish of Willington, uh, which has a made NDP under the type of Willington Group NDP, and as such, both the core strategy and NDP form the development plan for this application. The application site is within the identified settlement boundary of Whittington and benefits from outline approval for the erection of two dwellings. The description of development at the outline stage referred to the erection of two cottages. However, cottage is not a term defined in planning legislation or policy, and as such, it was assessed at the outline stage as a proposal for two dwellings. At the outline stage, both the layout and access were approved, which means the current <coughs> application is seeking reserve matters approval for appearance, landscaping and scale. These terms are defined in the officer's report to provide clarity on the matters that members are being asked to assess. We see paragraphs 6.5, 6.6 and 6.20 for those points. The application is being recommended for approval as set out in the officer's report. Next slide, please. Your members will see the application site marked by the red edge and it lies adjacent to and opposite residential development. As members saw yesterday, the application site is outside but on the edge of Whittington Conservation Area and is part of a larger agricultural field which is currently laid to grass. The local topography of um, slopes down to the north towards Duke Street where properties are approximately 130 metres from the application site. Next slide please. Here is an overlay of the proposed block plan for the site, which sets out two dwellings roughly following the building line of the adjacent Old Hall House. The site fronts onto Veldo Lane 
and it was asked yesterday at the site visit for the officers to confirm the status of Elbow Lane, which benefits from pavement and some highway drains. The local highways authority do not have a record of who owns the lane, and it is not owned by the council and does not form part of the public highway. It is therefore a private track on which there is a footpath designation. Given this state of designation, it is publicly maintained with footpath standard only, therefore for pedestrian traffic only. This was set out in the officer's report for the grant of outline permission when the access was assessed. Next slide, please. Here are some photos of, for the benefit of the members that couldn't attend the site visit uh, to show context before we look at the elevations. The red photo is looking east along Belgo Lane in front of the application site. The right hand side of this photo is it is possible to see 16 vine tree floats, which looks out across the application site. The green photo is looking west along Belgo Lane, shows the unmade nature of the lane, with the application site's front boundary roughly visible and the damaged hedgerow. Next slide, please. Here, the red photo shows views across the application site from Beldo Lane towards Duke Street. The green photo is the same shot, just slightly to the right, where you can see Old Old House in the corner of that shot. The blue photo <coughs> is of Old Old House from Beldo Lane. This is the last house in the conservation area for which the application bounds. Next slide, slide please. Here members will see the proposed elevations and floor plans of the dwelling. The dwellings are double fronted with half dormers at the first floor level. Materials are predominantly facing brickwork, which accords with the requirements set out in the NDP by policy P4. Each dwelling provides three bedrooms. And while these dwellings have been reduced slightly in scale since first submitted, they remain large three bedroom properties with substantial living accommodation. A number of objections have cited the design and scale of the dwellings as being harmful to the character of the area and the residential amenity of existing residents. The proposed dwellings do have a deep plan and a shallow roof pitch, which adds to the appearance of depth and visual massing to the side elevation with substantial gable that extensions to the rear. However, the proposed dwellings align with the adjacent old hall house, such that the side elevation will largely be screened when approaching from the east. The ridge height will be 82.05 metres above Waterman Station, whereas the adjacent old hall house has a ridge height 29 centimetres higher than that. At 82.34 meters above all the state. Next slide, please. Proposed landscaping scheme is set out here. As members can see, this includes the formation of hedgerows to enclose the application site and includes trees planted as standards in a rear boundary hedge at 15 meter intervals. The proposed hedgerows and tree planting will help to integrate the development, but also filter views to and from properties facing onto Duke Street to the rear of the site. These dwellings that face onto Duke Street uh, are in excess of 130 metres from the proposed dwelling. Uh, given, given this back-to-back -back distance and considering the proposed dwellings align with the existing dwellings front and onto Belgo Lane, it is not considered that the scheme will unacceptably reduce the residential amenity of these properties. In summary, the application seeks to gain approval of appearance, landscaping and scale, and it is these matters that are up for consideration today. While, there, uh, while this is another application that has been met with local opposition, officers' opinion is that the proposed development does, does meet the current policy requirements set out in the development plan, as assessed in the officer's report. The scheme includes solar panels and a full rainwater harvesting and recycling system, and a detailed surface water draining strategy, which has been reviewed as part of the application by BVLP engineers in regards to the conditions on the outline. They've raised no objection. The application is being recommended for approval as set out in the report. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Now, can I invite uh, Mrs. Heatley to speak on behalf of Withington Group Parish Council? You will have three minutes, Mrs. Heatley. Can I use this? Yep. <clears throat> Press to ask. Sorry. Thank Hold it fairly close to your mouth, well, I'm afraid it's working. Yeah, sounds right. Is it working? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know when to start. Starting now? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the planning committee, 
Um, as this is a reserved matter application, there's a little point going into the many objections the Parish Council has to this development. So there are three main points I wish to make on behalf of the Parish Council. One, the design of these houses is too large. Two, the environmental problems have not been addressed adequately. And three, the scale of these houses means that there will be a danger to school children who use this unsurfaced lane as their main walking route to the primary school. My first point, the houses are too large. This is not all about the roof line. These houses are quite deep. They do not reflect the local characteristics of the area. They conflict with policies SD1, RA2, and LD1, as highlighted by planning officers to the applicant. This is a sensitive site adjacent to the conservation area. Smaller cottage-style dwellings were proposed in their previous application, number 214331. However, the current application, these are not what could be described as cottages in a village conservation setting. The planner's report states that I find they would be positively contribute to the street scene. A narrow country lane past fields along a public right of way can in no way be described as a street scene, and they will be very imposing coming from the fields from the west. My second point, the environment. There have been several sewage and other flooding incidents, both on Baldo Lane itself and down this field onto Duke Street below. These properties will increase the amount of impermeable surface at the top of the field and therefore further increase the flooding risk below. Residents in some houses already require sandbags to protect their homes from runoff from the field. My third point is that these houses have substantial garages, three, bed three bathrooms and a home office. They are likely to have two or three cars per household this will completely alter the character of this part of the village and will create a severe danger to small children with their mothers pushing buggies that use this lane every morning and afternoon on their way to school. The parish council is already tasked with addressing parents' concerns regarding the speed of vehicles past both access points to Willington School along narrow roads with no pavements. As one mother said, this is an accident waiting to happen. We do not want to add to that possibility. In summary, the house is too large and the consequent environmental problems are very great. We would therefore respectively request that the application be refused. Thank you. Thank you. Clearly within the three minutes. <laughs> now I call on Mr. Thomas, who was speaking on behalf of the applicant. Thank you, Chairman, and good morning, members. I speak in support of the officer recommendation to grant approval. Outline planning permission was granted on the 4th of December 2018. The principle of development is established and the site is within a settlement boundary defined in the NDP. In 2020, a separate planning application was made by a third party on the western of the two plots. This is noted in the officer report. The dwelling proposed was very similar in scale and identical in height to those proposed under this application. The council did not refuse that scheme on design grounds or concerns for the scale of the dwelling. Hence, the council has already confirmed that a dwelling of equivalent height is acceptable on this site. It is a legitimate expectation that decision making will be consistent, and hence, that members will conclude that the scale of the dwelling is now proposed is also acceptable. Turning to the amendments made during the course of the application, there have been reductions to the height and width of the dwellings. Window proportions have also been reduced and an oak frame porch retained. The principal elevation has cottage style traits, and it is this elevation that users of Belvo Lane will experience. Publicly accessible viewpoints at the rear elevation are at a far greater distance. Your officers consider the design is acceptable, and we agree with them. As per the NDP preference, the dwellings would be constructed in high quality facing brick under a natural slate roof. Solar PV and thermal panels are proposed and space heating will be by air source heat pump with the submitted drawings confirming habitat enhancement by a bat and bird boxes and native species hedgerow with specimen trees at 15 meter intervals. Importantly, the consultation exercise has confirmed no objection from the technical consultees at Welshwater, Alpha BT or the Highway Authority. 
In summary, the principle of development is established by the Outline Commission and inclusion of the site within the settlement boundary. The dwellings have been reduced in height and volume to address concerns. The dwellings are now lower than the immediate neighbour and consistent with the height of the dwelling proposed under the earlier application. The design employs renewables and would create significant habitat and green infrastructure. And the materials proposed are high quality and consistent with the expectations of the NDP. Your officers have given careful thought to all material considerations and we wholeheartedly endorse their recommendation to grant approval. Thank you. Thank you. Right, we'll now turn to the public gallery. Uh, if you could just move out of the public gallery, thank you. Right, you see. Thank you. The local member being Councillor Paul Andrews, I'd now like him to open the debate. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you all um, for visiting. We could visit yesterday. That is appreciated by myself and the locals. Um, thank you to the officer for his great um, report. It's well noted. Thank you, David. You know, and like I said to you earlier on, sorry that you were leaving us. Regarding this application, as you just heard from Wivetown Group Parish Council, it is the, it's the scale of the actual properties that they are against. They feel it's a conservation area, it's over, overpowering for the area, they're not cottage style properties. The last one, I think um, Mr. Thomas just quoted on um, two pools, two four. 204168, if I know rightly, which was refused. It wasn't undetermined, it was actually refused on the Simdo property. Now, what, what, what the parish would like is a more sustainable property in a, in a smaller capacity in a cottage style. Yes, the MPPF do not do a cottage style, but they're overpowering. The landscaping, which is, you know, I think on two, I'm just coming back to my notes, I do apologise. Um, on in report 6.18, there's no issue on landscaping, but then on 6.23, the landscape scheme helps to mitigate the change of the area. So that's sort of contradictory in that. But the main principle is as well. Is the hedgerow going along there in front of the properties? I think it is deemed that it's going to be transplanted. Well, as, as my photograph showed, which I sent in two years ago, how the hedgerow was, how it is now, and what, how it's destroyed, how that's going to be transplanted from a belief. So that needs to be looked into if that is going to happen. So there's many in landscape, but please. It is, the, it is the size of the properties that is the main concern. But it's understand by, by the parish and the residents that something's going to be built. It's just the size of the property is not consistent with what the outline planning could have been or was interpreted at the time. Please listen to what the lane is. The lane is, as pointed out, not owned by Heritage Council, it's poorly maintained, has to be maintained by residents that live in the area. It's going to be even more damaged by vehicles going up and down. Yes, we're not looking at that. I know we can't go back to the outline plan commission. But please debate on what you can see in front of you. It's a conservation area. The properties proposed do not go in line with what the area is next door to it. It's outside of it, yes. So please look at that. I've got other points which I will do after the debate. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Can I just note, looking at the, the hedge when you were there, I don't think the hedge is worth saving, actually, as it was, because it pure bramble cost of it. Uh, uh, yeah, but, 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 yeah. it, would, it would be improved by the planting of of a new uh, type. But anyway, that's what an incident. Right, can I now open it up to debate? Are there any speakers? Councillor Milmore. Um, can you tell me what the speed limit is on that lane? Is there a speed limit? No, I imagine because it isn't a public highway. 
It's not so anyone can drive any street they like along that lane. Yeah, I don't think that's necessarily an issue because it's no, I, I, in relation it's to what's brought up about children going to school, I just want yeah. to um, in my own mind. So I've got a bit of a problem <laughs> with this uh, application because it seems to tick a lot of boxes um, for some of the people who, um, you know, like the Greens who like um, solar panels and what have you. But the word cottage really does jar with me. I don't understand why you would describe such a building as a cottage. So, so we don't know what, what sort of speed cars would go along that way. There is a, uh, the only bit that is made of a reasonable standard is a maintained uh, or a tarmac uh, footpath, isn't there, on the, on the left hand side. So I wasn't at the, at the site meeting yesterday, so yeah. I'm trying to get There, was, there is a tarmac mind. footpath on the left side of the okay. right. lane. Yeah. It's the road that, uh, that is the problem. Right. Um, sorry, yeah, I, I think banks. I'm probably just just to sort of clarify that it's not a publicly maintained highway, so there is no applicable speed limit. It right. is maintained only to a footpath standard. Nice okay. Yeah. Councillor Mill. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other speed? Councillor Harrington. Yeah, just a bit of clarification, please, Chairman. So, in relation to transport, which Councillor normal the phrase again. Um, because it was already outlined permissions already been given, does not the scale of what the final proposal is still allow us to go back and, and discuss access, transport access? Because if we're then told about the size of the building and the, you know, the extra rooms, for example, and I'm not sure if the rooms have gone up, I presume they have, now that we've got a final uh, application. Therefore, more cars are likely to be used. Therefore, that does materially affect something. So I'm just interested in that point. There's one point. The second point is when you have a conservation area, you, you must give some weight to the adjoining area, even if it doesn't simply break at a conservation area. And I just wondered how that is in relation to open land. So is, is there a difference between a conservation area breaking in a, in a, in a built environment and a conservation area that literally ends with an open field, which is now being added to yeah. I appreciate this. Can I, can I just say for, for, for information, the adjoining properties within the conservation area are executive type houses, modern executive type houses. Well, I was at the site visit, but yeah, yeah they, they, they were in a vernacular that was different to what was being yeah, yeah, was But they are yeah. Yeah, modern executive well, houses. But yeah, but the question, Chairman, was just how we assess um, the adjoinment of you know, how, how we assess something that's adjoining a conservation area, or can we give it a certain amount of weight? Yeah. Councillor Rowe. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I got reservations about the um, that little lane, but we, we can't deal with that. Uh, I, every year I have a week's holiday and I rent a cottage. And in the morning and in the evening, there's a queue for the bathroom. I got me a bit last. There is no, no cottage I've ever rented has had three bathrooms upstairs and the downstairs toilet. It's four uh, washrooms, if you like. And the definition, the official definition of a cottage is a small house. Uh, I'm looking at the plans that uh, Mr. Gossett handed out yesterday and stood there looking. Those are going to be small houses. They're going to be quite big. I, I understand what you're saying, Chair, about the, that what was next door. But they did look like <coughs> cottages. They did have that sort of little country feel about them. I, I, I think it's pretty disingenuous for them to be described as cottages. If I um, uh, if I'd had read the documentation before the uh, site visit, I'd have been expecting something cute and fluffy and roses around the door, especially as it is. You know, it's knocking on open countryside there. But uh, for me, well, uh, once again, I, I'm never normally um, indecisive, but I, I really don't see that as a cottage. I think they're too big. I think they're overbearing. Uh, and um, it's not the right place, I don't think. Not for me. And also, Councillor Watson. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, um, I agree with um, Councillor Rowan. And um, my issue as well, and I have to say that I have got an interest because I'm leading on a dark skies project in my own ward. And it's really disappointing when I hear and see 
in conservation areas that lighting is having to be brought up by residents and um, you know their concerns about other um, houses that have been built in the area and I really just wish that we could just have a, a condition that says any external lighting, if at all necessary, um, can be dark skies compliant. Um, it's, it's an essential because, especially in a conservation area, and being the vice chair of the Y Valley A O M B Joint Advisory Committee, it really makes me very sad. My other point is that I also want to explain my own situation in my own ward is that I have a boat, a byway open to all traffic that is like a private track, which is, has 15 houses on it. And um, with the recent lockdowns, the increase of white vans, um, delivering goods and everything else, the it is treacherous um, on Waiview Lane in, um, in the Dowad. And I think the more cars you have, the, the more, um, and the bigger the houses, the more needs there are. And yeah, it's, it, I, I'm very reluctant to support this um, application um, because of my own experience around a private track or a boat. Mm. I'm not sure that would be something you could raise with uh, that appeal, but anyway, mm -hmm. do you want to say something? Yeah, I had a couple of answers to the questions that have been asked as well. That's right, Chair. Um, firstly, Councillor Harrison, you asked some questions about the, the change in, in scale of the dwellings from the outline. Uh, the outline permission was for one three bed and one four bed property, and then the reserve matters has come in for two three bed properties. So I'm not sure we'd be able to look at some of the points you raised. Um, yes, I, I think there, you know, there, there is a, um, we would give material weight to the, con the preservation of the conservation area, even though we're outside of it, because as you say, we, this like can affect, uh, can affect that. And yes, there would be a change in, uh, if, if the end of a conservation area was within a town or, or on the edge of a town, um, yes, again, that different type of assessment. Um, it's worth remembering the outline has been granted. So we've accepted that two dwellings could be built in. Um, so we are just looking at the appearance of the design at all, exactly. Indeed. Right. Thank you. Um, to address the, the point about the cottage, um, Councillor Rome, uh, there's no planning definition of cottage and was assessed as the outline is that just referring to two dwellings and it's on that basis that the outline was approved um, and we have no conditions because there's no definition of cottage <coughs> to sort of try aiming towards that um, so for you Jay, would it be not for us to decide if we saw it as a cottage i realize that it's terminology but we, we're not professionals we're here to make a judgment aren't we so that would be for us to decide if we thought it was a cottage or not I don't think I, I don't think a planning inspector would uh, look very kindly on us trying to define what is a cottage when they when, when planning planning law has not defined what a cottage is. Cottage. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just one more response um, uh, in regards to lighting conditions. Too uh, is a dark skies lighting scheme, um, and the proposed lighting is down lighting only. A maximum of two lux, which accords with the ecology reports of the outline. So, yes, there have been problems locally with lighting, but not on this scheme. Right. Um, Councillor Norman, I believe, and then Councillor Andrews. Thank you very much. Um, well, very, very much along the same lines. I would like to start with a positive, which is to say how <coughs> encouraged I am that there is going to be solar panels, there are going to be solar panels, uh, rainwater is going to be harvested. And I believe I heard that there was going to be a, a, an air source heat pump. So those are all very positive things to be able to say about it. But again, I, I'm afraid I agree with all the comments about the scale. And it seems to me this is all very inappropriate for an area like this. It wasn't able to come on the site, but it always helps enormously if you can. So I'm sorry about that. But this, that does seem to me to be challenge and a big problem and I, I think this business about cottages is really disingenuous I take the point there's no actual definition but it's misleading to talk about something as a cottage is to suggest something small and cozy and appropriate for a rural small village and uh, it is very misleading in my view to call it a cottage when it's a large executive type of building so whatever the actualities of it that seems to me to be not terribly honest to be truthful Way I'd see it. So I think this is right out, out of keeping with the area and other, other aspects of it. 
a couple of other quick points, um, just to be reassured that the um, surfaces will all be permeable. I think I noticed something about tarmac somewhere in the, in, in, in the description, couldn't find it just now, but just to be reassured on that seems to be pretty essential that any surfacing these days is, is permeable. Absolutely should be completely agree with the dark skies policy and glad to hear that we're aware of that. And just on the hedging, um, I think the point was made that it wasn't a terribly good hedge, but unfortunately if you start a new one, it takes a long time to grow and develop. And I understand that the hedging is going to be at least some sort of a barrier or, or it'll help not for it not to be quite so invasive and intrusive for the neighbours. So I hope at least we can improve the hedging rather than um, rather than uh, remove it and replace it if, if indeed it goes ahead. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, one more quick point, maintenance. Anything where any planting, you always have this dilemma of who's responsible and who looks after the maintenance and so on and so on. And uh, just to be sure <laughs> that there will be proper maintenance of hedging and trees and all the rest of it. Can I say I know quite a bit about hedges and, and etc. That hedge which is there is not replantable. Basically, it's collapsed, um, and you know whatever happens there, you either have an eyesore there or you mature replanting. Then let's yeah. say, yeah. Councillor Andrews. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman. Well, first of all, Beldo Lane from our observations yesterday is not so much a lane as a mud track, which is not going to be improved by extra vehicles and, of course building vehicles, delivering building materials. I find the cleft stick with this one. I note, once again, the statutory consultees have no objection to it, but like everybody else, I feel that the proposed designs are rather too large for the area and uh, somewhat out of keeping. I don't know if it's possible, could this application be deferred so that um, the applicants can come back with something a little smaller and a little, little more. I'm sorry, am I right in saying more rural in, in appearance? Because the design presented would look more in, uh, in keeping in an urban area. But I don't know if that's possible. Mr. Banks. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I just want to make members aware that there is an alternative application which is as yet undetermined, which and um, the applicants have submitted to secure their outline permission. So again, I said it in the previous application, I think as officers, we prefer that you determine the application on the basis of what you have. Um, the provision, I suppose, is made for that discussion about an alternative scheme so, so by virtue of another if, application. If I get that right, Mr. Banks, if we refuse this, they can come forward with the, the, op, the the, there is another application. There is another application to the to the pipeline. Which, okay. Is that smaller or slightly? <laughs> I'm I'm resisting using the term cottage, so. <laughs> no, um, but um, the scheme that we have on the table um, as an alternative is for more modestly sized properties. More modest, modest dwellings. More in keeping with the local ambiance. Thank you. Right. I don't think you, you were suggesting a, a deferment, but I don't think you were slightly plus. Well, um, perhaps, we can perhaps then refuse this application, knowing that there's another one waiting Ca in the week. Councillor Boyd. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have a problem here, haven't we? It's a, a little, little problem we often come against. Is a, so we've had a permission here given for some buildings, and we are now being asked to do planning on details or decisions on details. How much can we say to them? If we don't like that, we think we can do something else, come back with a different design. Can we, as uh, Councillor Andrew said, defer it and ask them to come back with design that is more like the traditional meaning of the word cottage? And perhaps we should actually define cottage on our next small strategy as well. I just have to with thanks. Um, but is that possible to do that? What can we do otherwise? Otherwise, we're completely powerless. Uh, all I can say is the abundant potholes, I suppose, equal traffic calming, but um, that's not quite what we're really looking for either. We want a, a decent little lane for that for people to walk down. And 
we need to certainly, I know it's a footpath, and that needs to be maintained, is being maintained by the council, so I've heard. But what can we do? Can we actually send this back and say, look, come back with a design that is more in keeping, more modest, more cottagey, more cottage like, small, charming, delightful, but having all the facilities that you might need, but actually reduced in size and impact. Can we do that? Mr. Banks. Thank you, Chair. The, the, the manner in which these applications have been submitted is we've agreed the principle. Um, the, the planning uh, app makes provision for applicants to submit an outline application that agrees a principle of development on a site and then submit a reserve matters application which considers the detail. So it is perfectly appropriate for committee to consider the detail of a scheme. If members are not content that the scale and the design and the massing um, of these proposals are acceptable, if you are concerned that um, they don't reflect or respect the um, character and appearance of the surrounding area, particularly you might have regards to the conservation area as Councillor Harrington has referred to, then you are perfectly entitled to make an assessment on that basis. And if you see fit to refuse the application, you can do so. But you need to make sure that you concern yourselves with the matters that this reserve matters application deals with. As Mr. Gossett said at the outset, layout and access are approved. So any debate about additional traffic movements along Veldo Lane are frankly irrelevant to your determination of this application. You should concern yourselves with the three matters that are appearance, scale, and landscaping. As far as the alternative application is concerned, whilst I've mentioned that, that shouldn't influence your assessment of this application ultimately. You, you need to make a judgment as to whether or not you think these proposals are acceptable in those three matters. And if the, if, if the conclusion is, no, it, it isn't, then you should look to refuse the application. If you conclude that actually, yes, it is, then obviously you move the recommendation of approval. Thank you. Councillor Mill. Uh, thank you, Chair. Specifically on, on landscaping, uh, and I, I'm going to reference uh, what uh, Councillor Norman was saying, and I do appreciate that, uh, uh, and, and Councillor Milmore will, will, will not be surprised to hear me say this, that the efforts have been made by the applicant to, to introduce uh, sustainability features of solar panels, and it's, it's good, as, as Councillor Wilding has often moved to a mark that these are these are these buildings are aligned to the south so that the there is a, a strong solar capture element to to the thinking behind them though there are in my in my view some very good things about this this scheme um so some of the the greener things are a bit greenwashy to me on my way of thinking uh the bat boxes and the and the nesting sites and the and the and the and, and the, and the, and the I don't know, the, the, the made of eco star agreed, which I look, looked up and I discovered is actually made, made of polystyrene and cement, which is very unsustainable material. But anyway, that's a, so, uh, uh, well, well, but, but, but the, 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 the landscaping is, does fall down on the, to my way of thinking, on the one specific matter of the amount of hard material, or well, the amount of uh, vehicle access roadway that there is, not necessarily hard, but uh, uh, um, um, areas of the plots that are, where infiltration has been compromised by buildings or by paving or by roadway. And the only way we, we're going to address this is, is, and is, is through taking the cue from the state of Belder Lane and, and uh, persuading applicants that we need to do no car developments or low car developments. So if this if this scheme came forward with a genuine, genuine move to encourage walking with active travel, MT1, policy MT1, and say, well, rather than spending all this money on, on car parking and, and turning circles and all the rest of it, we're going to put some money into a into a car club for the for the village. Uh, we'll put an EV charging point in in, in the village. Uh, and that would impress me. 
that would impress me. It's really thinking outside the box in planning terms. But that is a way in which we would meet MT1 on active travel. Um, but anyway, I haven't yet made up my mind. If the debate continues, I shall. Oh, I'm going to vote on this, but thank you, Chair. Councillor Wilding. Thanks, Chair. Um, I too sort of want to agree with what Councillor Norman was just saying. So I do commend the use of uh, the solar panels, the air source, heat pumps, and all the rest of that. But I think that's great. I'm also mindful of what uh, Jiskin said uh, about the possibilities. Some of some of that is sort of greenwashing, but I think it's brilliant that it is included. Go back to the use of the word cottage. I mean, if if an application can use the word cottage, which is presumably in order to convey the idea of a cottage, uh, so that we have in our minds that it is a cottage, then surely uh, we should be allowed to say, it doesn't look like a cottage to us. <laughs> I think that's fair enough. And uh, it's a bit like, you know, I'm gonna have a pig in the back, I'm gonna slaughter it, sell palm a ham. I can't, I, I think I might grow some grapes and sell champagne, I can't do that. Um, so I don't see why someone should say it's a cottage and then we have to accept that it is a, is a cottage. It isn't. Um, I'm interested that uh, we've heard the applicant has submitted another application. I, I guess the idea there is that we'll, we'll have this big one and we'll see what we can get away with. And if that isn't good enough, we'll come down a little bit and we'll, we'll get something anyway. So... Uh, yeah. So um, anyway, that's it. Can I, can I can I recommend you look up Swiss cottage and have a good one? <laughs> or uh, Swiss cheese. If you want, it, yeah, if you want one <laughs> definition of a cottage, having been there myself, um, it's a rather grand um, place. Anyway, um, Councillor Harrington. Thank you, Chairman. Can I move that we take this to the vote for a refusal on the basis of the impact, the scale and design in its proximity to the conservation area, LD. Four, I believe, and policy seven of the NDP, I think that is what it relates to. Is that seconded? Councillor Bowen. Right, I'll, does anyone else want to speak at this point? We have a proposal and a seconder. Then I'll move to the officers, perhaps to Councillor Banks. Sorry, yeah. Mr. Banks. <laughs> um, Chair, um, Councillor um, Stone actually put his hand up. Um, yeah. well, I thought he was seconding, seconding but yeah. uh, that's, oh. that's, that's... I was doing both. All oh, right, <laughs> sorry, Councillor uh, Thank you very much. Just to say, Mr. Chairman, I was also not comfortable with the so-called cottages. And here on the site was it yesterday. I think the scale is not appropriate. On the other hand, um, if cottages are built there or houses or whatever, they're going to have a wonderful view um, across and um, that will be benefit for them. Um, I'm sure the landscaping situation will be sorted out. The one thing that I really was disturbed about was the state of the road along there. I realise it's not the main planning issue here, but I think it does need to be mentioned that it's deteriorating so much it's going to be very unfortunate for anyone living along there. Um, this is the problem with these private and unadopted roads. Nobody taking responsibility for them. Um, we've just got one in uh, Broomfield in my ward, and it's going to cause all sorts of problems in the years ahead. So I'm very sorry for the people who live down there and put up with the mud, the potholes, and everything else, which we suffered from yesterday morning. But um, basically, I'm not at all happy with this application and hope something better will come down the track. Not that track. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Mr. Banks, sorry I demoted you. Um, I should have demoted you. Oh, Mr. Gosset, I don't know. You. Okay. Um, I think, really, just to sum up um, clearly, as I said before, the matters that you need to be concerning yourselves with are to do with appearance, lands uh, landscaping, and scale. I think Councillor Harrington has encapsulated that quite well in um, his final comments. Um, and it's, it's clear that there is some concern in those regards uh, across a number of members. Uh, Mr. Banks, could I just ask if LD1 would be appropriate as well? Sorry. Uh, 
which is in, in relation to character. I think LV1 probably will be a case. Can I add that as well? Sorry, to LV4 and LV7 of the NDP. Yeah. Thank you. So I, I, I think the, the direction is, is fairly clear from, from the debate. So I think we've discussed scale and, and those matters um, quite considerably. Um, I'm still not sure what a cottage is and what a cottage isn't, but nevertheless, I think the, the broader concerns about the scale, about the appearance, and about the concerns that that has on the setting of the conservation area are clearly matters um, that the committee uh, have, have some concerns with. Chair. Thank you. Right, we'll go now to Councillor Andrews for the final comments. Thank you, Chair. And thank you, members, uh, for a great debate. Yes, like I said in the summing up, and obviously you heard from the parish council and everything else, at least the scale of the of the properties is their concern. The planning commission is already there, I, I appreciate what Councillor Owen brought up about cottages and the bathrooms, because there is a sewer problem and there has been sewage problems in that area as well. Again, there is an application. Um, another application which has been muted so, um, and mentioned, which is a bit more appealing, um, but that's all I'm going to say on that. I also would like to say to the applicant that please talk to parish council and residents when you're bringing things forward. We're all here to talk. We don't want a bit of back and forwards. Talking is good. I always say talking is good. So I do hope that the applicant can actually engage with the <coughs> residents of Wivington on applications in the future as well as this current one now. That's all I'm going to say. I'll wait for the vote. Thank you. Thank you. Now, can I ask members that uh, there's been a proposal, proposed and seconded. Can I ask for those in favour, please raise their hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Those against? Abstentions? One, two. And that is carried. Can I thank you all for your attendance? And finally, is the live stream switched off? Remind members that the next meeting is on April 8th.